Thank you. Ekitiketi u. Ekitiketi u. Ekiti amashoro u. Your Excellency, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. This is a great day. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, GCONSAN. Your Excellencies, my brother colleagues from Lagos, Governor Babajide Sonwolu, Edo, Governor Godwin Obaseki, Ondo, Governor Oluwaru Timi Akire Dolu, here represented by his deputy, Deputy Governor Loki Aida Tiwa. Your Excellency, the First Lady of Ekiti State. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Ekiti State. Your Excellency, the First Democratically Elected Governor of Ekiti State and the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Otumba Adeni Adebayo Omolu Abiwani. The Right Honorable Speaker, I the State House of Assembly and other Honorable Members here present, Members of the Federal Executive Council here present, Distinguished Senators, Honorable Members of the Federal House, Members of the Ekiti State Executive Council, Investors, Development Partners, Political Leaders, Our Royal Fathers, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. I am extremely delighted to welcome you to the Ekiti State Economic Development and Investment Summit which we have christened the Fountain Summit. This is another significant step to set Ekiti on the path of sustainable economic development. When our administration came into office three years ago to commence our second term, we made a promise anchored on restoring our land and reclaiming our values. Three years later, much progress has been made, but our work is not yet done. As we are all aware, the economic impact of COVID-19 pandemic left most countries and most economies reeling. And Nigeria was not immune to this. Thankfully, through a set of deliberate actions, we have now exited recession, and our economy is back on track. with quarter two 2021 GDP numbers coming in at an impressive 5.01%. These results demonstrate that with sincerity of purpose and cooperation between the government, federal government and states and the private sector, we can grow our economy significantly and put tens of millions in the jobs they so desperately need. At this point, I would like to specially acknowledge the role of our keynote speaker, His Excellency the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, in implementing the Economic Sustainability Plan, which played, which played a significant role in returning our economy to growth. 
It is a state like other states was not immune to the economic shocks resulting from COVID-19 pandemic. Our productivity took a hit as we prioritized the safety of lives and instituted a proactive lockdown that minimized the impact of the pandemic on our people. We also introduced fiscal reliefs to cushion the impact of the lockdown on businesses, which significantly affected our internally generated revenue, especially in quarter two and quarter three, 2020. The situation was worsened by the reduction in revenues distributed from the Federation account, which dropped below the threshold of 650 billion Naira set at the beginning of the pandemic. If it is net FAC and VAT receipts dropped below 3 billion Naira per month as the state struggled to meet its monthly break-even target of 3.7 billion Naira for recurrent expenditure. This was further exacerbated by the absence of any fiscal buffers. Instead, when we came in, we inherited months of unpaid salaries, pensions, and gratuity, all of which we're still struggling to offset. And at this point, I'd like to thank our workers for their understanding and tireless commitment to the state, whilst reaffirming our earlier commitment to them that we will meet all outstanding promises before our time in office is over. Our solution to reduce the dependence of equity state on federally distributed revenues is to enable private enterprise by making the state an attractive destination for investors. Our efforts have started to yield results with the Kundiri farm, Moribond for over 40 years now operational and producing, <laughs> and producing over 80,000 liters of milk per month. <laughs> Thanks to the public-private partnership with Pumasido Nigeria Limited, in addition to the dairy farm, other large-scale agriculture processors like FMS Farms, GMK Foods, Promise Point, Arog Limited, Stallion Group, Dangote Group, and Egbeja Snail Village, amongst others, are now operational and creating jobs. Later in the summit, you will hear from the CEOs of some of these companies who will share their experiences of doing business in a kitchen state. To provide skilled workers for the agricultural sector, we established a new College of Agriculture and Technology for the training and production of extension workers. I'm also pleased to note the impact of our Equity State Development and Investment Promotion Agency, ECDIPA, which is now fully operational as a one-stop shop to onboard and support investors, whilst also acting as the hub of all investment-related activities. We're poised to improve our position among subnationals on the homegrown ease of doing business indicators measured by the Presidential Enabling Business Council, PEBEC. Today, I am pleased to note that our weakest section in the ease of doing business indicators, which is enforcement of contracts, has been addressed by the collaborative efforts of the judiciary, the legislature, and our Ministry of Justice and ECDIPA, and has made possible the establishment of small claims courts in the state. We have also made significant progress with our equity knowledge zone, our special agro-industrial processing zone, and our cargo airport projects, which are all designed to increase economic activity in the state. We have started construction of the airport and expect it to be completed by this time next year. We have also received a grant of $250,000 from the African Development Bank to prepare a full business case for the Equity Knowledge Zone and should announce an anchor investor and partner for the project before the end of the year. Our agro-industrial processing zone is all already occupied and we expect additional occupants over the next few years. And our social investment program has continued unabated. We still offer comprehensive, free, 
compulsory and qualitative free education program right from primary one up to senior secondary school three level. And we'll build new schools, renovated over 800 schools across the state. Built and equipped an emergency control center with CCTV cameras all over the state. Renovated and equipped all our primary health care centers and general hospitals and completed a number of projects either abandoned or not completed by the previous government. We have also focused on increasing internally generated revenue significantly. When we returned to government, the state was earning an average of 450 million naira per month. Lagos State is there and Edo State is there, so don't laugh. <laughs> Which has now gone up by 55, 60% to 800 million naira. We now have a goal to attain 1 billion per month in 2021, which we have successfully achieved twice already. Our roadmap to sustaining this is by fully implementing the autonomy of our internally revenue service to complement the digitization of revenue collection launched last year. In addition, we have just completed the state's geographic information system infrastructure which will enable us to reform our land and property administration process and earn additional revenues for the state. We are already seeing the benefits of these reforms, and I am confident we will achieve our target of sustainably generating 1 billion naira per month in 2022. If we achieve our goal, it will increase the amount available for capital projects and allow us to do more to develop the state over the next 12 months. Whilst we have made some progress in improving the road network, connecting our economic clusters, our focus will now move to improving the quality of our internal roads. In addition to roads, we also plan to improve our education and healthcare infrastructure to ensure we invest in human capital development and to begin to reap the benefit of our support in the broadband ICT infrastructure network. Many would recall that Equity was the first state to crash the right-of-way tariff per linear meter when we reduced it from 4,500 Naira to 145 Naira per linear meter. And this has started yielding dividend. We now have MTN and IHS laying over 2,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable in the state as we speak. We are also investing in security. We are building an independent power project, environment and climate issues, water and sanitation, amongst others. Despite our lean resources, we have begun the implementation of the minimum wage in the state. In addition, we have kept our word to make salary and pension payments sacrosanct, and we've not failed in this since our very first month in office. Our commitment is to continue the prioritization of staff welfare and development, to ensure the civil service, which is the engine room of any government, is well resourced to deliver optimal results. This is why this Economic Development and Investment Summit is important. It is an effective platform to share ideas, um, which is why I am also delighted that His Excellency, the Vice President, accepted our invitation, despite what I know to be his crowded schedule, to deliver the keynote address here this morning. We will also have an opportunity for peer learning, and I am pleased to once again welcome my brother governors from Edo, from Lagos, and I know that the governor of Kaduna and the governor of Gombe State are both on their way. And they're governors from across four different geopolitical zones with different circumstances, but they will share with us how they've also managed subnational uh, uh, states uh, towards growing the economy. 
Finally, we would also have an opportunity to gain useful feedback from those who are here to serve, the investors who make our economy tick. At the end of the summit, a report which will be reviewed by our Economic Development Council and presented to the State Executive Council for adoption and implementation will be developed. These short-term recommendations of the report will be diligently implemented by our administration, whilst the medium and long-term recommendations will be part of our handover notes to the successor government. I would like to use this opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to institutionalizing this summit, and we will take the necessary steps to ensure it continues beyond this administration. I have already signed a bill to establish the Economic Development Council into law, and I see the council chairman and some of its members are attending the summit physically today. Going forward, the council will be tasked with the job of planning and implementing this summit to ensure its legacy outlives our administration. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Akita State Economic Development and Investment Summit, TAG Fountain Summit 2021. Thank you for your kind attention, and God bless you all. I think His Excellency deserves another round of applause.